Well, greetings to you, sisters and brothers. Grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, be with you. Welcome to session number 30 of our 40 sessions devotional based upon the book of James. Good to have you along with us. Uh, for this particular session, we're taking a look at James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. James 4, verses 11 and 12. If you've uh, missed any of the first 29 sessions, they're all saved right here on our Facebook page, also saved over on uh, the YouTube channel. I mentioned last session about the closed captioning option being on. That might or might entail you having to turn the settings to on on your end of it. I'm still trying to learn some of the stuff, to be quite honest with you, friends. Um, but I was able to see it uh, on my end, so I'm not sure. Um, if you didn't get it through our Facebook page, uh, your settings may not have been turned on to closed captioning, which if you don't want them, then you don't have to worry about it anyway. Uh, and YouTubers, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't think there's a way to do closed captioning there. Uh, at least I've not figured it out yet. So in any event, like I mentioned last time, if you like the closed captioning, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know that as well. Uh, and if you don't want to use it, then just and you're not getting it, then I guess don't worry about it and we'll, we'll just uh, keep on moving. But for tonight, for session number 30, we're again taking a look at chapter 4 of James, verses 11 and 12. And here's what James uh, has written for us for this session. He says this, he says, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or sister or judges him or her speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and only one judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? It's the word of God, friends, for you and I, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Where is what our devotion writer offers for us for this session. He says, television is making judges of us all. This struck me as I was watching American Idol a number of years ago. I smugly analyzed and spoke my verdict over each singer as the show was designed to let me do this. But then, after Steven Tyler said something that made no grammatical sense, Jennifer Lopez began to praise a singer that I thought was awful. I said, what is she thinking? That was terrible. Suddenly, I was judging the judges. When Randy, in my judgment, rightly said it wasn't his favorite of the night, the audience booed. Why do they always do that, I thought. They don't know anything. Another judgment. The worst part? I have no credentials that would qualify me to vote with any semblance of expertise. All I have is my opinion. But since I have a remote and two ears, I cast judgment in my living room like I am a record producer. Judgmentalism is an epidemic in our society. We judge everything. We even judge our brothers and sisters in the church. We look down on them and gossip about them. Sometimes in our self-righteous benevolence, we give godly advice on how this person can improve themselves to become a better Christian. Well, a better Christian in our judgment, anyway. In our worst moments, we'll find ourselves thinking, why are they here? Are they even a Christian? If so, they certainly aren't as mature and sanctified as I am. We spend a lot of time trying to ignore the planks in our own eyes so we can condescendingly stare at the specks in the eyes of others. Judgment can be funny when watching American Idol, but it is deadly in the church. It causes despair among those who worry about their faith and pride among those who they think have this whole Christian life figured out. To be sure, we are to lovingly correct one another when we fall into sin. But it is not ours to judge the faith of our brothers and sisters. That belongs to God. He is the one able to save and destroy when we find ourselves being judgmental toward our brothers and sisters, we find ourselves opposed to God. His judgment toward sinners took place on the cross. The guilty verdict against sinners was declared on Jesus as he was condemned in your place and in the place of all your brothers and sisters in the church. God has cast his judgment for 
all of us on Christ. And his verdict, you are holy for Christ's sake. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, gracious judge, you have had mercy on me for the sake of your son Jesus who took my guilty verdict and died in my place. You have declared me a sinner to be righteous. Please forgive my constant judgmentalism. Teach me to let your judgment stand for my brothers and sisters. Help me love and not judge. Amen. So what is our response to this session's devotion? Well, our author suggests something that we talked about a few sessions ago. He says, once again, go an entire day without saying something negative about someone else. An entire day. If you're watching this at 10 o'clock, do today, right? See if you can make the next 12 hours without saying something negative about someone else. That means anybody. Somebody you know, somebody you don't know, right? Public figure, private figure. Try to go the rest of the day without saying something negative about someone else. Well, friends, as we bring this session to a close, I want to offer to you and ask that you receive this word of grace. You are surrounded by people who judge and condemn. Sometimes their condemning eye falls on you. But fear not, for God sees you too. But he looks on you through the shed blood of Christ Jesus. He took God's judgment for you and away from you. Because he was judged guilty in your place, you stand innocent before God by grace alone. All right, my friends, that brings this one to a close. Until you and I meet again, God bless and take care.